Hello everyone! Are you ready for your bedtime story? Tonight I'm going to be reading Dear Santa, Love, Rachel Rosenstein, written by Amanda Peet and Andrea Troyer. Rachel Rosenstein loved Christmas. The Rosensteins didn't celebrate Christmas because they were Jewish. Being Jewish was fun most of the time. It meant you got to hunt for the Fikamen on Passover, blow the shofar on Rosh Hashanah, and get a present a day for all eight days of Hanukkah, not to mention as many latkes as you could eat. It meant that when they celebrated Shabbat, Rachel and her friends and family passed around the challah and said the same blessings that Papa Murray said as a child, and his Papa before that, and his Papa before that, and on and on until Rachel's head began to spin. But when Christmas came to town, Rachel felt like a kid in a candy store with no mouth. Can we please put up some lights this year, she asked staring out the window at her best friend's Tina's house. No, said her mom. How about a tree? Emmeline Berenbaum's family has a tree, and they're Jewish. You can't sit on two horses with one behind, said Papa Murray. I can, said her mom, especially after that meal. That night, Rachel wrote a secret letter. Dear Santa, I live in the brick house on Huntley Drive. Yes, the one with no holiday decorations. It does have a chimney, and there will be cookies waiting if you come down it. I've been really good all year, and I know that you are a fair person and will not mind that I am Jewish. After all, so was Jesus, at least on his mother's side. Love, Rachel Rosenstein. Christmas is in less than a week. Rachel looked up to find her sister Hannah hanging off the top bunk. There's no way that letter is going to get to the North Pole in time. Hannah had a point. As luck would have it, a couple of days later, Tina's mom asked if Rachel would like to tag along to see Santa at the mall. Did you get my letter? Rachel asked when it was her turn. I sure did, said Santa. Remind me what it said. Are you coming to my house even though I'm Jewish? Time for a picture, said an elf. Click, click, flash. For a moment, Rachel couldn't see. The next thing she knew, someone else was on Santa's lap. Now Christmas was only one day away. Santa was going to skip over Rachel's house unless she did something radical. There was just one thing missing, cookies for Santa. In the kitchen, there were no cookies, only leftover latkes. Rachel pressed some chocolate chips into them and tried one. It was good, better than good. She ate three more and put the last one out for Santa with a glass of milk. The Rosensteins were ready for Christmas. Rachel stayed awake as long as she could, lying in her bed, listening for the clip-clop of Santa's reindeer on the roof. Visions of sugar plum fairies danced in her head. But the next morning, ah! there were no piles of presents. My shirt, Hannah cried. What did you do to my favorite shirt? Hey, what's all the commotion, asked mom. Christmas is stupid, and so is Rachel, yelled Hannah. Rachel cried. Across the street, she could see Tina's family in their pajamas, opening the presents Santa had brought for them. Her mom sat down next to her. Sometimes, no matter how badly we want something, we just have to accept what is, okay? I gotta get to work. Nobody else's mom works on Christmas, Rachel said. Just because it's Christmas doesn't mean there aren't sick kids in the hospital. The world doesn't stop. Rachel cleaned up her mess. Later that afternoon, 
Her dad took them to the park, which was practically empty. And for dinner, they took Papa Murray to the Chinese place where they went to every Christmas. Papa Murray ate chicken feet that looked exactly like chicken feet. Rachel's dad stuck chopsticks up his nose like a walrus. Don't try this at home. Rachel tried to eat her favorite salty dumplings, but she was too sad. Then she saw some familiar faces. Lucy Dang from her class, and Mike Rashid and Amina Singh. What are you guys doing here? We don't celebrate Christmas, and this is the only place that's open, said Mike. You celebrate Hanukkah too? No, said Lucy, but Chinese New Year is in a few weeks. Amina said, we celebrate Diwali. It's the festival of lights. Hanukkah's the festival of lights, said Rachel. I celebrate my birthday, said Lucy's little sister. The older kids laughed. That doesn't count. Everybody does that. And Rachel realized, when there were so many great holidays in the world, why feel so bad about one little old day like Christmas? Well, maybe she could feel a tiny bit bad. The End